Hello and welcome everybody to week two of the virtual demo series brought to you by Rhino Toolhouse. My name is Colin Seibert, sales engineer here in Wisconsin and Northern Illinois. I'm Ryan Mashlin, applications engineer for the Midwest region. So we're going to take about one to two minutes, let everyone get settled, let everyone get logged in, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. All right, so we're going to begin. So today, Ryan and I are going to show you a system uh, called Light Guide, also known as LGS, Light Guide Systems. Um, but before we get into that, I just wanted to start with a short story. Uh, so yesterday was National Mom and Pop Shop Owners Day. Um, obviously, throughout this pandemic, they're being hit the hardest, and uh, especially the ones without an online platform. But uh, something that I wanted to share with you, and, and hopefully you guys are doing that, but, but we're very, very lucky to continue to be employed, um, and to continue to get paid in some way, right? And I think it's part of our duty, and, and both Ryan and I, and, and we had this discussion earlier, can attest to it, to make sure that we're supporting those mom and pop shops. Um, me personally, I'm a, a big mountain biker, and uh, typically if I break something on my bike, say my derailleur, um, I'll go to Amazon, search the part, and buy it on Amazon. Uh, but this has really, you know, taken me a step back and Rather than doing that this past week, I, I bought a part from the local bike shop on their, on their website. Um, they delivered it directly to my house, just like Amazon did. It took two days instead of one, but you know, that's fine, right? We're, we're supporting our local shops and, and the ones that need it most. Um, so with all of that, um, here at Toolhouse, you may not think of us as someone that can provide commodities, right? Maybe you go to an online source to, to buy, for example, these bins or to buy your floor mats. Well, those are also things that we can do. So what I, what I hope you, you'll do when you're specking out your next project is you'll also think of us for, for the commodities, for the workbenches, for the chairs, um, for the bins. Reach out to your local sales engineer and I think you'll be happily surprised when you get the pricing back that, that we're just as competitive uh, for those commodity items as, as you may have found from another source. So with that, we'll jump into Light Guide. So Light Guide is an MES system. MES stands for Manufacturing Execution Software. And uh, what separates LightGuide from other MES systems is that everything is projected directly on the work campus. So most MES systems will have some sort of display like we have here, um, and on the display will be the work instructions. That's great, um, but LGS took it further and uh, they're projecting the work instructions directly on the work surface, combining you know, automated reality or augmented reality with assembly. Some great use cases for Light Guide. Uh, the most prevalent is for assembly, obviously, and to ensure that your process is error proof. So whether Ryan's building the part or whether I'm building the part, it's built the exact same way and it's built well when it goes out the door. Um, error proofing is also where you'll find the easiest ROI for this. Um, I mean, it'll pay itself off in a month if, if you take into account the amount of rework that goes into uh, some of our assembly processes. We're also seeing it being used for training. Um, so some of our customers will buy it for, for new, to train their new employees on the assembly process. Or maybe you work at a factory where your operators are switching workstations. Well, this is an easy way to, to certify each employee at each workstation to ensure that they're building the parts correctly. It can also be used for time studies. Um, so we track pack time and also process time for each individual assembly. And uh, it's an easy way to, to take that time and figure out you know, what is the total time taken on the process. Um, you can also use it for quality control. Like I mentioned, regardless if Ryan's building the part or I'm building the part, it's gonna be built the same way every time and the system forces that. And lastly, it's used to capture data. So we use the term birth certificate a lot. Um, it's important that for everything you build uh, that, that you can Go back and track, you know, my, my torque was properly committed, uh, this part was properly placed, and uh, 
what we print off is a birth certificate of this showing the date and time and time stamping all of that to ensure that everything was done properly. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan to talk more about the features. Hey, thanks, Colin. So basically the real power of this system is that we can tie in almost any type of uh, hardware. So for example, we have a Desuter DC tool here. We can use Clico, we can use Estic, we can use any gamut of uh, um, hardware that supports a, um, Ethernet I.O., for example. We also have a, two projectors on this particular station. One projector is projecting at the bins, and that's allowing the operator to know what bin is highlighted at what time. And we have another projector projecting at the canvas. The canvas is showing us exactly what um, instructions are, are on the screen and giving the operator um, instruction on how to move forward. We also have machine vision here. We're using Cognix, but we, again, you can use uh, Keyence, Omron, or whatever preferred uh, vision system you'd like to use. We also have a 3D sensor. So the 3D sensor is allowing the operator to uh, pick out of a bin and proving that the operator picked out of the correct bin at the correct time. It's uh, also sending a signal back to LGS, allowing us to go on to the next step. Um, we also have a barcode scanner. The barcode scanner in this particular applica application is using it for um, a process. So we're just gonna scan a barcode and it's gonna start a process. So we can also have it scan QR codes. We can have other barcodes for multiple processes. You can have hundreds of processes. We have speakers and the speakers are, using, are being used for audible instructions and notifications. You can have an operator wearing earbuds and the earbuds can uh, give a, the operator audible instructions and it can also give them um, um, audible instructions as well as reading it on the canvas. We have a label printer here. The label printer is used at the end of the process so we can print out a ship to order label. So you, at the end of the process, put it on the, on the part, just put it on a pallet and move on and begin the process over again. We're also using a more of a mechanical feature of a, a push button um, foot pedal so we can advance the next steps, allowing the operator to use hands-free motion. So basically we can tie this system into anything. We can use uh, robotics, we can go DC tools, machine vision, um, any kind of IO, as well as PLCs. So if you can dream it, we can basically implement it into this LGS system. So with that being said, let's, uh, let's begin the demo. I'm gonna use the barcode scanner to scan the barcode to begin the process. So a little bit of background on what we have on this particular canvas. We have a program time, which is gonna be the overall time in which it, it takes to complete the process, as well as uh, step time or your tack time, which is gonna be monitored on every step. Um, the DC tool right now is active. However, throughout the process, we will have it deactivate so the operator can only use it when it's called upon during the program. So as it sits right here, we're gonna say place the empty tackle box into the fixture, open as shown in the picture, and then torque the bolt. So Colin, if you torque the bolt, Notice we got an active or a, a pass signal to the controller. So then we tell LGS to move on to the next step. So as Colin pulls the trigger and there's no torque value, we're gonna get a fail and we're gonna continue to be on the next step until we see the okay function within the controller. Now we got the pass so we can go on to the next step. So from here it says pick the koozie from bin one. As you can tell, bin one is highlighted. All the other bins are highlighted in red. So the green highlighted bin is the bin we wanna pick from. So we pick from it and it says place the koozie in the highlighted square. So I'm just gonna roll this koozie up. I'm gonna place it into the highlighted area. And now we have an option on our screen that says we can press the, press the left foot pedal to proceed or we can swipe. We can use the swiping feature with the 3D camera to move on to the next step or we can use the foot pedal. So Colin, if you wouldn't mind swiping, excellent. So pick the tool house pen from bin two, so again, Bin two is highlighted, we'll take the pen out. Place tool house pen in bin, place the tool house pen in the highlighted area. So we'll hi put it in there. And for this one, I'll use the foot pedal. So it says press the left foot pedal. So press it, it moves on to the next step. From here, it says pick flashlight from bin three. So I'm gonna go into the wrong bin on purpose. And if you notice, we had an audible signal telling us that we are not allowed to pick out of that bin. We're not gonna go on to the next step. We also had a visual showing us that the, uh, um, some red X's saying that we cannot move on to the next step. So we went back one step to, uh, again, to pick from bin three. So if we pick out of the right bin, 
place the flashlight in the highlighted area. So I'll do that. Then you can swipe again, Colin. And there was a quick flash. So the, the machine vision actually took a picture of the product inside of the, the container. And that was proving that we had all the right product and they're all in the right location. So it moved on to the next step. So it, right now it says close the lid on the tackle box and then torque the bolt. So again, the tool is now active. It's gonna be running a reverse strategy to remove the bolt from the fixture. And now it moves on to the second. Great. So now we can pick a graphic from bin four. And here I'm gonna put the graphic on backwards on purpose. I'm gonna flip it 180. And I wanna show you that the machine vision is looking at the right graphic. And if you notice, it's not giving us a pass signal. If Colin were to rotate the image 180 degrees, the vision will take the right picture. We get an audible sound giving us a clapping sound that we can move on and actually the process is complete. So now we're gonna have the label printer print us a label and then we can palletize it and move on for a ship to order. So this is just one example of what Lycide can do. Um, obviously we tied in a torque tool. Um, we had a simple uh, toolbox assembly and uh, we showed you a quick pick to light system uh, that can be used with light guide. Uh, but like we kind of mentioned throughout the entire demo, the world is your oyster with light guide. Um, you don't have to project onto a canvas. You can project directly onto the part if you'd like. Um, and, and you can really do just about anything to control the process. Aside from just light guide, um, light guide system also provides two other uh, pretty unique solutions, one being spot guide. Yeah, so spot guide is essentially light guide only using spotlights. So light guide um, is kind of tailored for projectors and where the spot guide comes into play is for very large stations or very large areas. You can have up to 40 different lights in one station or one unit, if you will. So those 40 lights can, so, can be placed throughout the whole plant. So let's say you have a project where you're picking um, 40 different parts or 40 different boxes from different locations. These spotlights, you can scan a QR code and it'll generate a pick list. And in that pick list, we can have the spotlights go into the direct um, perfect location so the operator or the um, picker can go into that location, pick the right parts and not be confused on what part to pick next. So it saves the company a ton of time, a ton of money, and it's just an overall very effective uh, system that um, LGS or OPS has now uh, implemented. So the other solution that, that Light Guide has is called Sight Guide. Um, essentially what it does is it takes the projected work instructions and puts it in the footprint of a wearable. Uh, so you'd actually be, be wearing, say, a HoloLens or a Vuzix or a RealWare, and uh, the work instructions would then show up in the operator's uh, site of view. So rather than projecting on a work surface or on a part, um, there'd be a little box in, in, your, in your view of site, and you'd be able to see what the operation is and what you'd do next. Um, areas where we're seeing success with site guide are, are maybe an inspection, where you're actually going around a part, and it'd be difficult to set up projectors because of line of sight. Obviously, with, with light, you need to project onto something and you need line of sight. With sight guide, you do not. Uh, so that's just another solution that, that they offer. Um, but that really sums up what we wanted to show to you today. Uh, hopefully, you guys can see some of the benefits that this system can, can provide you, whether that be error proofing, training, just conducting time studies, or just looking to capture data uh, within your assembly cells. So thank you for your time. At this point, we'd like to open it up to Q&A. And uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat below. We have a question. How big of an area can a projector illuminate on the work surface? The question was, how big of an area can a projector illuminate on the work surface? Uh, that's a tough question because it all depends on the ambient light in the factory. It depends which projector you choose. Um, you can tie in, I, I think there's five to 10 different projectors depending on, on lumen and uh, power. Um, and then obviously the distance you are away, the larger the footprint um, within the actual presenting field. Um, but with that, you can tie up to 16 different projectors into one system. So if, if projection field is a difficulty and your part is massive, um, worst case scenario, you can just use multiple projectors. And, uh, another one um, is for camera verification. Can you move the camera? to a spot used for a reference point, then verify from there. Yes, we can. So we can do dynamic. What's the question, Ryan? Oh, I'm sorry. So can the camera do essentially dynamic tracking? 
I'll sum it up a little bit. I think that's the question. Um, yes, we can absolutely do that. We can pick a reference point. Let's say if we wanted to take a reference point on this table, we could always look at that. So if your fixture is moving, it would always be looking at this one reference point and tracking along and finding, you know, the whatever we're looking for at this time. Okay, when site guide, uh, do you put an array of 3D cameras to increase the coverage area to overcome line of sight issues? So with site guide, do you put an array of 3D cameras to overcome the line of sight issues? Um, so uh, that, that is one solution. So the reason the 3D camera is used is typically for bin picking. Um, the, the plus or minus on the 3D camera is probably about an inch. So you're not really using it for um, actual assembly. You're mainly using it for, for bin picking. Uh, so I guess you could use an array of 3D cameras, uh, but in most cases, when you're using site guide, you're probably not gonna be using the 3D camera at the same time. Okay. Um, question, are these all custom systems or are there out of the box systems? So are these custom systems or are these out of the box systems? So each system is actually custom. Uh, so essentially what um, the customer is basically paying for would be for uh, the software based, but everything you see here is custom after that. So the controller, um, the projectors are spec'd out specifically to the application. So uh, whatever application you have, we would determine what kind of projectors are needed from an area standpoint and from amount of how much light we need to shine on the product, if you will. And everything that's custom within the system is, is something that we do at Toolhouse. So from the workbench, like I was alluding to before, to the bins, uh, to the 8020, to the tools, that's all integrated through us at Toolhouse. Um, to kind of hit on what Ryan said, uh, Light Guide does have something that they call Light Guide Trainer, which is specifically used for training, and that's kind of a out of the box solution. It's not a custom solution. Um, it's it's solely used for training. So that is an out of the box solution they have. Typical cost for this demo setup, projector, pick the light, torque control tool is? So the question was, what is the typical cost for, for this solution? The entire solution here from the tool to the projectors to the vision system uh, to the printer. Um, quite honestly, what, what drives the cost uh, most of the time is the vision system. So whether you need a five megapixel or a two megapixel, depending on what types of inspections we're doing here. I'm not certain what camera we have here, but rough cost is, I mean, if you're tying in a DC tool, somewhere between 20 to 30K, depending on the application. Um, if you're getting multiple cameras, multiple projectors, it, it can increase from there. While tracking the torque tool, does it track the actual tool tip or the approximate region to which the tool is taken to? So the question was, while tracking the tool, does it actually track the tool tip or does it just track the region of where you're taking the tool to? With this setup right here, we're not actually tracking the tool. We're just showing the operator where to go. Um, you could tie in with a, with a torque arm, uh, a three axis torque arm to ensure that you're on the right fastener or with other spatial recognition systems. Um, but right now we're not tracking tool position, we're just showing the operator where to go. If a workspace changes from one assembly to the next, is site guide what you would recommend or something like this or both? So the question was if, if the work surface or, or workspace changes uh, from one assembly to the next, would you go with site guide or would you go with light guide? And I guess the another question to that question is how much is it changing, right? If you're just changing a few things, what you're projecting can change. So um, like Ryan was alluding to, when he scanned to start the process, we can have hundreds of different recipes or assembly processes depending on what part you're making uh, or what generation part you're making. So um, I, I hate to answer with another question, but it really depends as to what the changes are. What successes have you had overlaying on surfaces that are not flat? Any examples? Yeah, so the question was, what successes have you had on surfaces that are not flat? Um, because it's a projector, uh, projectors do a really good job of, of wrapping a, a, 
uh, apart with curvature. Um, so we've projected onto pumps. Uh, we've projected onto things like a dashboard. Um, we've projected on plenty of parts uh, that, that have curvature. Uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to the ambient light. Um, if, if your facility has a lot of windows and, and ambient light coming in, um, it, it may struggle. But if it's just a, a typical factory LED site, uh, system, uh, you won't have any issue with, with curvature or curved parts. Question is, uh, light guide only has parts present, correct? Is there a way to tie in lasers to measure thickness at all? So the question was, light guide only has part presence, is that correct? Or can you tie in lasers? Um, the answer to that question is you can tie in lasers, whether that be presence, absence, or analog. So say you're using a measurement laser, I want to make sure, so rather than using a quality checker like a vision camera, you want to use a laser to ensure that you're within a micron after you place the part. And you can definitely tie in uh, through an analog module. Well, that then will talk to the PC. So tying in a laser isn't an issue. Um, who does the programming of the system? Question is, who does the programming of the system? Um, so basically right out of the box for your particular application, we would do the upfront programming for you. Um, typically our customers take over from there. It's very simple. It's sequential based programming. Um, it's essentially the projectors are acting as monitors. So you can take a picture, drag it onto the new projector, line it up the way you would like it, and then you go on to the next step. So it's very simple. And it's something that we can easily take a day or two with, with the customer and uh, teach you how to do it. So we can move on from that. Yeah. So typically when, when we set up a system, we'll first do a proof of concept. And what that means is you, you guys as customers would invest, you know, a, whatever, whatever it might be for us to prove the concept that the system works. And while we do that, we train you. Um, we work with you to make sure that you know the system in and out. And uh, obviously we're not just going to sell it to you and, and leave you out to dry. We're, we're definitely going to support it. So if you guys have questions, you can come to your local sales engineer, your local application engineer like Ryan, and, and we'll definitely help you out with the programming. Um, why do you have to swipe or press a foot switch while moving on to the next operation step? The question is, why do you have to swipe or hit a foot switch to move on to the next step? Um, you don't have to. You can base everything on time, um, but it's just something that's sequen sequentially stepping through the operation. And back to the whole data capture and birth certificate, you want to track, or, or the reason we're doing it is to track a cycle time for each individual step, and then also to print a date and stamp for each individual step. So that's the reason we do that. Did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, you can make your steps with everything with a vision camera to prove that the step was created. Um, but yeah, to Colin's point, you don't necessarily have to have a button, but it's ideally you want to have something that um, lets the operator go on to the next step rather than getting behind in the process. Right. The beauty of the system is that you catch a mistake when it happens rather than at the end. Uh, so that's really the reason we check with a vision system every step or we'd hit a button or, or do something along those lines. You can catch the mistake as it happens. How much would just the LGS software package cost? The question was how much would just the LGS software package cost? Uh, there are three different tiers of uh, software. Uh, so it depends what you need. Um, if you need, if you're talking to a DC tool, you might need the premium package. If you just are looking to project and uh, use soft buttons like we were with our swipe, um, you'd probably have the standard package and the packages range from, uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but somewhere between like seven up to 16,000 for the software. And Rhino Tool Hub support is uh, not only in the north, but in the south. Can Rhino Tool House support Light Guide in the, in the, not only in the north, but in the south as well? And yeah, we can support in all 29 states and, and beyond. I mean, if you have uh, a location in, in Colorado, we'll definitely help you with the setup out in Colorado as well. So uh, we can support this across the entire nation. Is that about it? Fantastic. Well, thank you guys for joining us um, tomorrow. Again, same time, 1 p.m. Uh, we're going to be showing the DeSuter Connect. Uh, Ryan is going to be helping Alex Worth with that demo. And uh, the DeSuter Connect is what they call their industrial hub. 
And the power of the DeSuter Connect is that it can uh, operate 20 cordless tools at one time. Uh, pretty cool technology, um, really gives you a, a, a lot of diversity and the ability to really take your, your assembly steps to the next process or to the next level. So we hope to see you tomorrow. Thanks again and uh, stay healthy. Thank you.